Recently the BVA, the British Veterinary Association, released their official position statement regarding the use of electric fencing for farm animals. And it is interesting because the BVA have chosen to support the continued use of electric fencing for farm animals, even though they accept that such fencing is capable of causing, to use their own words, harm and injury. Okay, be it to the animals that it's containing or to other animals, including human beings, children that may come into contact with it unwittingly. So, in, in view of the fact that this is a, a potential, the BVA have issued guidelines in the use of electric fencing. And I just wanted to talk about this because I would hopefully this, you will find this interesting. You will find a level of hypocrisy um, and uh, a lack of logic as well in what's being said here because ultimately, if we are talking about promoting the welfare and the freedom of sentient beings and uh, for us to best work in line with law so that we allow those animals the freedom we, we recognise and we uh, strive to achieve the freedoms that those animals deserve to be able to exhibit natural behaviour being one of them um, and to be able to be free from pain and suffering, unnecessary pain and suffering, frustration is recognised as being um, a, a primary cause or a principal cause in the development of uh, unnecessary suffering. Certainly if you're th uh, an animal's thwarted from carrying out natural behaviours, natural activities, then frustration can develop and this can have a severely negative impact on the animal's emotional or um, psychological state. So anyway, we have the BVA um, saying that um, they recognise the use of electric fencing for livestock, so the sentient animals being in this instance things like horses, cows, sheep, pigs, goats, um, and that they recognise that although uh, these risks are um, present, that it is still uh, acceptable until more humane methods are explored to use electric fencing to contain these animals. Now. When you look into the document, I urge you to look into it, the document that the BVA have put together, the paper that they've put together, or it's, it's only short, so it, but it's got hyperlinks in there to a training document, which is interesting as well. And what you'll find is what the BVA recommend is that the fencing basically be used at a level that is appropriate for the species concerned to avoid severe shocks. Okay, so there's obviously some form of recognition that this electric fencing is capable of causing severe shocks. Now, I, I don't know of any link to any study, there isn't one in there, and I certainly don't know of one personally that either determines what a severe shock is or the fact that electric fencing for livestock is capable of delivering it. But um, clearly there is because the BVA is science-based um, and they you know, pride themselves on following uh, modern scientific discovery and work in accordance with that. So you have a system that's capable of causing injury and harm and severe shocks, but we're still happy to run with it anyway. What the BVA also recommend is that um, training be followed, okay, with respect of the uh, livestock fencing. Just to come back to the severe shocks thing a moment. By implying that or, or suggesting that um, a species should be uh, basically subjected to electronic stimulation at a level that is not excessive for it, but is sufficient to be able to achieve the task in hand, electric fences come with one level. Okay, you, could, you might be able to adjust that level, but that level isn't auto-adjusted. It doesn't adjust in accordance with the animal that comes into contact with it. So what we're basically suggesting here, that a membership of a species alone is enough to um, state that our threshold for avoidance, our threshold for recognition of discomfort or of pain is equal by virtue of the fact that we are all the same species. Now, we know for a fact that this clearly isn't true. It isn't true of humans, it isn't true of dogs, and it isn't true of any other animal. But it's more convenient, because the, the alternative is to accept that, well, hang on a minute, we're using a system here that has a single level of stimulation, a single level of energy, and that that would indeed be inhumane, perhaps, you could argue, if you were arguing it in this way, because it doesn't account for the individual needs of each individual animal that's gonna come into contact with it. But, being realistic, it is unrealistic to expect that um, farmers adjust fencing to basically accommodate every single animal's individual threshold to escape and avoidance, uh, principles associated with escape and avoidance. So we have that, okay? We have the fact that it's okay to use uh, a system that is capable of delivering se sh uh, severe shocks, harm and injury, and is only basically a one-trick pony. It's got what it's got. If you look at an electronic collar, by comparison, you're looking at up to 127 different levels of stimulation. So you can absolutely match precisely the level of stimulation to the individual concern, the individual animal concern, not the species, not the animal by virtue of the fact that it belongs to uh, Canis familiaris, 
but by virtue of the fact that it is an individual. So it allows you to use the system compassionately, accurately, proportionately, and justifiably. But with the, with the fences here that are being permitted, that isn't the case. You can't do that. So we see automatic, or we see instant sort of like um, uh, unjustifiable uh, discrimination between the two systems. And we've got to ask ourselves what that's based on. So then we look at are, are the, uh, the BVA and the uh, associated uh, bodies uh, with whom the BVA uh, corresponds and concurs with regards to the use of electronic stimulation, are we practicing, are they practicing speciesism? Are we saying that a domestic dog is more important or uh, more deserving of protection from this harmful stimulation than are these other sentient beings, which, you know, by the very nature of the fact that they are sentient, um, requires that we uh, do our best to protect them and to um, minimize the risks of harm or distressful feelings and instead promote positive emotions. So it's interesting when you when you look into it and you should start asking questions about things like this. So when we go into the training, so the BVA recommend training the animals in a controlled environment to the fence, okay? What they say is that animals who fail to control, uh, fail to adapt to the fence should be monitored, identified and removed. And there's a hyperlink to the training process. The training process is basically trial and error. It's basically stick the animals in a relatively small enclosed area, put an electric fence around it that follows a boundary, let the animals bump into it and think bloody hell I'll avoid that then, then start to basically put the fence down the centre of the field instead so there isn't a visible barrier but allow the animals to recognise that they're a flag. Sim similar principle to an electronic containment system but far more, um, far more base, okay, so far less uh, uh, far less inclusive of uh, individual uh, recognition and um, adjustment of the system according to that individual sensitivity. Um, but this is okay. So what they say is I uh, monitor, identify and remove animals that fail to respond. Then in the training link, under awkward animals, okay, so the, the, the animals that failed to respond to the electric fences, the livestock that failed to respond to the electric fences are considered awkward. And the recommendation is that these animals are sold or culled, okay? Sold or killed, that would be, but we put it under the term culled. Do you know why? To reduce hassle. So the BVA are supporting the use of electronic stimulation, which is completely and utterly devoid of any human component that doesn't allow for context, that doesn't allow for individuality, that doesn't allow for sensitivity. That's okay. And your reason for then going on and culling or selling an animal that doesn't respond to it is because it's hassle. Now, can you imagine, just, just allow yourself a moment to imagine electronic containment fences for pets, that a dog that doesn't respond to that, that the, the published uh, advice was that you sell it or euthanize it. Well, you can't euthanize it because euthanize is a removal, you know, the relief of an animal from suffering that it's under. The dog isn't under any suffering, nor are the livestock. They're just simply not responding to the electronic fencing. So kill it. How does that work? On an ethical level, how does, in fact, on any level, any person with an ounce of common sense or, or, or morals will ask themselves, how does this work? Because you would not endorse that for one species. You wouldn't endorse it for dogs and you wouldn't endorse it for cats but you're saying that it's okay, you're linking to this training process and you're, you're sort of like removing yourself a little by basically saying monitor, identify and remove. You're stop of, stopping short of saying the rest of it, so hyperlink to another organisation instead, an electric fence manufacturer that basically says sell or cull to reduce hassle. Really interested to hear your thoughts on this. This is nothing against vets, by the way, the BVA, yeah, you might be representative of 18,000 vets, but you're certainly not representative of um, gathering the opinions of all of those 18,000 vets and working in accordance with them. Um, so it's nothing against vets, it's nothing against veterinary practice, it's certainly nothing against the use of electronic f uh, fencing for livestock or for zoo animals. Zoo animals were omitted. Uh, and it, obviously there are various forms of uh, animals in captivity where electronic pulse is used to preserve the safety and maintain, enhance, or, you know, uh, instill um, the well-being and the welfare of those animals to promote their freedom whilst in a captive environment. So it's nothing against that. It's absolutely nothing against the farming community who use these. I mean, the BVA are talking about um, until we can explore more humane options. Really, what more options do you get? You know, you get hundreds of acres and you get cattle or sheep or whatever the livestock happens to be that's contained within them. How else do you envisage 
these animals are going to be contained. You've either got hard fencing, you know, hard uh, borders that are instilled by man, or you have natural boundaries that are proved adequate and sufficient. Beyond that, there is nothing else. Really interested to hear people's thoughts on this. I'd love to see Teresa Villiers. That would make for her an interesting response. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you.